Hello everyone and welcome to another video from Sapling Servers Limited. I'm Bradley Comerford and today I'm just going to be showing you a few things about Craft SRV that you might not know, you might be new to the panel and you just might be confused on what you need to do to get your server started and up and running. Now the first things first is once you've got your email from us that should look a lot like this, if not exactly like this, um, it will Obviously here it has your order ID, the date you signed up, uh, the product that you purchased, where your server is based. So in this example it's in London. Your server's IP address, that's not necessarily your actual server's IP address, but that's the server that you're connecting to's main IP. The control panel URL, the control panel username, and the control panel password. Now in this situation, the URL for the control panel is actually wrong because that's for US. For London connections, you can connect with panel.saplingservers.co.uk, not to us1.saplingservers.net. So once you've got your details, you want to head to your correct control panel where your server is being hosted from. There you will want to take your username and your password and go ahead and enter them into the username and password boxes of Craft SRV. Once you've done that, hit login and it should log you straight in. Voila. Now it's going to be a bit slow for me because my internet isn't all that great. Once you, so you'll be greeted with a dashboard similar to this, but not exactly the same. So first of all, once you've logged in, you'll see my servers, and here there should be a one. If there's not a one, you're going to need to submit a ticket and let us know that you've got a problem. Otherwise, there should be a one. Now, on my account, I'm going to have the Sapling Servers test server for the US, um, which is already set up and running, so I'm not going to use that in this example. I'm just going to go and make myself a new um, a new server. Here we go. So add new server. I'm just going to call it test server admin. Um, let's not worry about that for now. World plan ID. I'll just go for five, which is our two gig plan. Um, and the port 255 um, 89. Why not? Right. Add new server. And then it should pop that one up for me. There we are. So now this is my new server. So if I go to my servers now, I should have two. As you can see, I do. I've got SAP and servers test server and test server. So here you'll see your servers and you can go ahead and click on manage server. Once you've done that, you need to go into the config for the server first and change a few things that are in there. So, the usual things that you want to change is the player slots, because it will usually always be set to zero. So, as I'm running a 2 gig, I'll put myself at 25 slots. Um, you want to change the jar file that you're running. Now, I recommend at this moment in time, SPI got patched, um, purely because that's the only one that's really working after the whole craft, uh, the, the whole bucket um, EULA issue. So the best thing to do is just go with Spigot Patched or Vanilla Minecraft. Either one will be just fine. Um, of course you can use a custom jar, that they are enabled, you just click custom jar, upload the custom jar and type in what the name of the custom jar is here. So once you've changed that you want to go to the bottom and enable, uh, turn whitelisting off and edit any other settings that you might want to edit. For example the world name, world and possibly the message of the day. This is a test server. Then hit save changes. Then it should save the changes here and let you know. So once you've saved those changes you need to head back to the manage server page and hit start server. Now the server will start but you will notice that it won't start properly. So the memory usage should go up a small amount up to about 28 29 megabytes as you can see here and it's got question mark question mark for connected players this is because the server is not started all it's doing is it's trying to start but what mojang have done since their new eula is they've made it so that servers will not start 
unless the EULA file has been set to true. So in this situation, your server will do this and then say an unexpected error occurred. Now don't worry, nothing's wrong with the server. All you need to do is head to files and hit refresh. Once it's refreshed, it can take a little while, it should refresh. And there you go, it's refreshed now. Mine's refreshed a bit too many times. Um, there you go. So now you can see here EULA.txt. Now this is what Mojang have put in place to make sure that you have to accept it. So once you see that, all you need to do is click Edit File. A small text editor should pop up. Yeah. So the uh, small text editor comes up and all you need to do is change this EULA false line here to EULA true. Like that. Hit save. Once it's saved. So as soon as it is saved and it is set true, what you want to do is then head back to manage server and hit start server again. Now the server should now start. The way you can check this is go to the console, hit start console viewer, it will load and then as long as this has stuff in it, um, you'll know the service. It's also come up here to say that my server has been started and there you go, it's preparing the spawn area for me now. Now to get the IP of your server, if you are confused, go back to manage server and the connection address here is your IP address for your server. That will mean you can connect to your server with that IP address. So my server has booted up. The CPU load is quite high at the moment. That should drop over time. There you go, it's starting to drop now. Uh, the RAM load is about right. And there you go. So Spigot is installed on my server now and my friends can connect and play with me. Now, with Spigot or Bucket or any of those kind of jar files, you may want to install plugins. Now the simple way to do that is to go to the plugins tab, search for a plugin you want. In this case I might install World Edit. So you click install on the plugin that you want. Then it should come up with a small pop-up with some options that you might have for the plugin. For example, where you want to install it, etc. And there you go. So it's come up now. So yeah, it's got all the options here where you can actually download it from if you just wanted to download it and all that all that jazz. So you just hit install and the plugin will install for you. Installing plugin and it will install. There we are. So the plugin, if I head to files now, refresh them and head into plugins, in plugins should be world edit. And there we are, world edit dash bucket dash 6.0 point jar. So there we are. So world edit has successfully installed and to actually enable that onto your server as your server is already running, the easiest thing to do is to just type in, go onto the console and type in reload, R-E-L-O-A-D and press enter. That should mean that the server will reload itself, check all its properties, all its settings and everything and then it will notice that, hang on, there's a new plugin here, I need to enable that and the plugin will be enabled. There you go, console reload complete. So in the files now, if you again refresh, world edit is now created in a folder and it is now running on the server. So I could go on and use world edit if I wished. So now I'm going to go through now some things that you'll need to know the basics of to get your server running. So say you're transferring your server from another provider to Sapling and you, you've got some world files you, that you need to upload to the server. That's not a problem. Once you've got your server on, you can just head to files, make sure you're in the right directory. So for most worlds, it will be in the home in the home area of the files manager because they will have a unique name. For example, I called the first one world, which you can see just there. So what you want to do is go ahead and hit upload file, choose the file that you want. Now it's important to make sure that the world file you want to upload is in a zip folder. Otherwise you cannot upload it. 
So once it's in a zip folder, you can just go ahead, choose the zip folder, hit open, and click on upload file. It will then begin to upload the file to the server, and you will then be able to have your world on the server and be able to use it as you did on your previous server. But once it's up, un uploaded in a zip, you have to make sure that you click unzip on the folder to get all the on the zip folder to get all the files out so you can actually enable the world. Now I'm going to go ahead and cancel that and show you a few cool things about Craft SRV that you, you might like and you might not. It, it's kind of... Mm, it's not necessary for you to use but personally I think it's quite cool. <coughs> Obviously here you can manage backups, so you can create a backup of your server. Um, tasks, you can set a scheduled task such as running a command, um, running a notification, so your server might do slash say, hey guys welcome to Sapling Server's new server, something like that. Otherwise, what I'm going to show you now is cool, so your avatar here can actually be your Minecraft avatar's face. So in this case you can see it's mine. So all you do is head to my profile and you can change your display name and your Minecraft username. Here mine is official Deswin because that is my Minecraft username but otherwise I could put something like Honeydew and hit save changes and it will change to Honeydew. There you go. You will know Honeydew or Simon from the Oxcast that is his Skin, I could change it to Zephos for the Oxcast and hit save changes and it will update to Zephos. You can have any Minecraft avatar face as your icon that is in game. So I'm just going to change mine back to official Desrin and hit save changes. Ah. I didn't spell it correctly. There we go. So there we are. You can change your password here, your username here, your email address here, <coughs> and you can change your password properly here. Now support is just a simple tab. If you click support desk that will take you to submitting a ticket for sapling. So if I just open that in a new tab, it will take you take me to the support desk for opening a ticket with us um, craft SRV documentation goes to craft SRV's website where you can view all the documentation for the control panel servers if you head to servers you can see all of the current servers that are online now you can use this to connect to the servers if you want to and explore other people's servers that are on your node however if you're going to do that please do not harass or say you've got the IP from a website, just say that you've got it from the server's area. Otherwise, you will face a ban from that user's server, and if they submit a ticket to us, you may possibly get your server taken away from you. So yeah, that's the basics of Craft SRV, guys. You can see that it's, it's relatively easy to use, and you should be able to get on with it fine. It has all the basic features that you should expect from a control panel and it is able to manage your server just fine. Now coming soon we are going to be having some more nodes in being put into Bristol. Um, we're going to be putting in about another 10 of them. We've already got one on the way from Poland at the moment. So on it's, it's in transit now, so look forward for that for those of you based in the United Kingdom. Uh, some of them are going to be dedicated servers and others are going to be strictly for Minecraft and other games. Um, we I will be taking a video camera with me to do a data center tour so that we can, you guys can see where our servers are kept, how they're kept, how they're managed, etc, etc. Another thing that I need to let you guys know of is that there is going to be an update to all of our servers soon. I'm not allowed to say any more than that 
but there is going to be a large update and it's going to improve the functionality of the servers and you guys should love it. So thanks for watching everyone. I've been Bradley Comerford from saplingservers.net and you've been watching some Craft SRV Basics. Bye.